Good afternoon, good evening, good morning to those of you in the Twitch chat, for those listening over Spotify, or for you guys watching on YouTube. Once again, we back at it again, boys and girls, with a Metabrickers podcast this Sunday at Eastern Standard Time on my channel and or D Ch Money's channel, which we're on right now. Appreciate you guys watching. As always, we're joined by D Money Games on the left, me in the middle, and Draco Cat on the right, ready to bring you good information in regards to the Hearthstone world. What's happened this past week? How's the meta shaking? The good decks and any juicy drama? What's going on, guys? Hey, uh, doing good, man. Um, just had a chill weekend. I have to work today, so that kind of sucks. But uh, played a good bit of Hearthstone this week. I didn't have a lot of fun, um, but you know, hopefully it'll get better. So. <laughs> What's up with me? Yeah, did you say Demony Games? Is that what you said? Yeah, I might wow. have. My bad. My oh bad. I'm so used to it, man. Uh, I'm so just like you call me the Warshack. Get out of here. It's been years, man. <laughs> like that you were Demon. You were longer of being Demony Games than Demony. Yeah, be that's fair. Be, be real. And my YouTube is Demony Games. He's been, he must be watching my YouTube videos. <laughs> that's what it is. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're you're <laughs> once a six monthly upload. Yes, yes. It's very yeah. That's how I tease you. Um, but hey, yeah, <laughs> thanks for that intro, Warshack. Yeah, doing pretty well. <clears throat> Can't complain too much besides, uh, hey, the usual stuff around the meta, but, um, you know, yeah, I mean, Draco, before the podcast, he was saying, uh, we should probably talk about some mini set cards today because, uh, the mini set just came out a week ago and I was like, what, bro? Are you serious? Like, it, it, it all, like, it feels like the mini set's been out forever right now. <laughs> and that's not good, man. That's not good. <laughs> Really? It feels like that already. Yeah, we got a, we got brand new cards <laughs> this week, but they don't really matter because in reality, it just made Beast Hunter even more powerful. So that makes up like every game, and uh, it's there. I would say their play patterns aren't like the things we generally perceive as like toxic, because it's not like an instant blowout where it feels like really unfair. But I, I would say a after playing against Beast Hunter the entirety of this week. Um, and the entirety of last week and you know it's just been like getting more and more beast hunter that it seems to be that happens when i play the game now um it's uh the problem is they just have more too much fucking stats like it and it's just too difficult to react to it you know like if you place like if i'm playing demon hunter in any context and i'm second against a beast hunter like i could probably just concede like it, unless they're just the worst wow. player ever. like it feels like <laughs> yeah yeah, I, I honestly would probably should just do that for my mental health. It's just being second against Beast Hunter is uh, it's not a good game unless you're the only. Do they have any unfavorables right now? Let me check. Let me check. Uh, barely, man. Barely. Maybe Wig Priest still. I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah, I think they actually started getting a. Yeah, they they are no longer unfavored against Wig Priest either. <laughs> um, so yeah, they have a positive matchup into everything. But uh, when you think about like like the deck, it's like it's forty cards. I think it, this deck showcases how powerful how powerful Renathal really was, because when you look at like the Renathal decks, they don't they they weren't like control decks that benefited the most from them. Um, and I will admit, I did like listen to a lot of people speak about this recently, like from a lot of the podcasts I listened to as well. But like all of the Renathal decks are just minions, right? Like. Renathal was good in Shaman. Shaman's got like school teachers and schooling and Denathrius and like uh, what the other decks that were good with Renathal were like Mage that has like a whole bunch of you know ways to develop threats and uh, just constantly keep generating tempo. Tons of minions. You know, there the Mage deck did have an intermittent amount of spells, but uh, all the Renathal decks that are that are really successful are the ones that uh, just didn't have the options to usually heal like druid and hunter like they can't heal they don't have a lot of removal tools that they can make like a control deck um so instead they can just put these really well statted minions for the cost and all they do is just keep playing them because the concept of killing them before they kill you is not very likely when all of their minions are so good you know it's it's like you can't kill all of them in, in an effective way because their minions are so good so they just eventually roll you over. And you can't focus on their face because they have more health than you unless you're also playing a Renathal deck. Yeah, that's exactly mm. it. Uh, the, 40, the 40 HP makes a big difference. And I talked about this on a, a previous uh, episode as well, that 
it really like changes the whole way that you have to play uh that extra 10 hp <clears throat> because it, it forces you to fight uh more on board which is good i mean we wanted to go back into like more of a a board centric meta but uh when hunter is the best at like fighting on board and developing these uh these big threats on board that you have to get through pretty much um yeah it gets a little tough because yeah if you're pushing uh like 10 damage or even 20 damage face when they have 40 hp then your opponent's still gonna have time they can just clear your board and then makes make a couple taunts and then it's just uh you can never push that extra damage through so yeah hunter uh that's exactly what a class like hunter needs like they needed healing for so long like it's that's one class in particular that never has access to healing but that extra 10 hp uh is kind of like healing i guess like it's it's like armor they have they start the game with 10 armor and uh they have to include 10 extra cards on their deck but like if all the cards are good then uh hey that's uh that's fine like yes you're maybe less likely to get your your saber combo off early on but there's just so many good cards in that class right now uh that synergize uh that work together well and uh yeah it is a force to be reckoned with as you see here on the uh, on the charts yeah Hunter got a lot of buffs too in the last couple mm -hmm. months in expansions. And I think like Hunter was always kind of like a little bit behind in regards to like the best stuff in the game. Like, you know, Quest Hunter was like a little bit more better at dealing with like the combo decks. It was a little bit better at dealing with the combo decks and stuff when those were better. And like when Imp Warlock was super popular, it was uh it was really fast and hard to react to. So that kind of kept the deck in check a little bit. But uh, after like all of the changes and we just constantly kept being like, oh, Harpoon Gun will discount a minion by four. No, you know? Like that was the change that was made in the game. Um, and, and even in development, uh, Wild Spirits cost uh, four, but they made it three. So like right before it launched. And things like that, when you're like looking at like the hunter performing not very well, you're like, all right, there's got to be, it's got to come back into the meta. Like it'll be good. But we've reached this mass where like the hunter cards are so efficient that it's, uh, you know, a, 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 a pretty much an impossible battle to deal with it in any kind of a, a fair matchup. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's crazy because the hunter that I was playing against like earlier off in the mini set, like the deck doesn't run any draw right but it always feels like their hand is full and they always have always have something to play but there's really no draw in the deck right <laughs> they just curve so well yeah it's your kind of deck there's some draw right well there's kind of draw not really there's like what draw does Hunter not have? a lot of draw like barack kodobin that's it and it actually runs that like that's a card played in the deck sometimes sometimes yeah <laughs> Because I don't... <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was going to say, what one drops do they play besides, like, tracking yeah, just as a tracking. spell? Yeah. yeah, but they also have, like, a, a pretty accessible dredge with, like, multiple cards because they have the, both the Harpoon Gun and yeah. the... Uh, what is it? The two threes? Oh, they have Canine Peasant Atron. as well. Peasant. Peasant is a pretty nice... Oh, card. yeah, and Peasant. Yeah, there's Peasant, Canine Atron, and there's Harpoon Gun. So they get to, like, help themselves curve out more. But, you know, if they mm -hmm. play, like, Batty Guest on one, Doggy Biscuit on two, um, Harpoon Gun on three, and then they play, like, a Jaren Saber on four, like, you just fucking mm -hmm. lose. like Because you, yeah. you always lose. It, it's, like, impossible when they play one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, like, it's just, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter that they have 40 cards. They just always uh, get the curve anyway, yeah. I mean, the deck yeah. is refined now at this point where it is built in, like, a perfect curve perspective. Like, there's 12 two-drops in the deck, you know? And four one-drops. And, uh, like, all the four-drops and five-drops and six-drops are very scarce. The only six-drop being, like, the Tavish. But Tavish being six is, like, another, like, huge power spike in the deck, too. Because, like, a lot of times, like, before turn seven is, like, when you, like, have, like, a when you're playing a fair game against the hunter. You know, like, you're, like, dick, you're, you're playing against them on board. You're staying alive. You're, you're, you're having a Hearthstone game. You know, you're, you're part of the Hearthstone game. Then all of a sudden, on turn six, they play fucking Tavish and then pick, like, a freezing trap to get whatever the last thing you have on the board is off. And then, like, an ice trap to stop you from, like, playing a spell to draw or something. And then uh, they set themselves up for like a turn seven mount a bear hydrolodon, and then the game's fucking done. You know, like that's that's always yeah. like the Tavish gap is so important at six 
because if they have it on six, it's like it, that's also kind of a GG a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Well, Hunter is at the top. So there's some of these bottom ones, though, like Rogue, J. Alexander, I saw like a Twitter post from him yesterday and he had like some really badass Rogue list. And he said that's doing really well. I mean, a lot of people playing Paladin having a lot of success with it. Do you think like that's just because it's the start and not everybody's switched to the top three yet? Or is there just some unrefined decks here at the bottom that just haven't been discovered people yet. play those other decks more um before today like if you queue up a game like today rob you will get primarily beast hunters there you might find a paladin or two maybe a rogue maybe okay. a demon hunter yeah i mean i've played so everybody's uh... new yeah go ahead I was gonna say, so everybody's new favorite class is hunter. Everybody's yeah, a hunter yeah. main now. That's all, not, that's, all the other everybody's just they've always hunter. loved hunter. That that's all you have to know, right? Like so, like all the other cool decks that were kind of good are unfavored against hunter. Well, everything's unfavored uh. against hunter. So, um, people naturally do the gravitation to the deck that wins the most. Ah, uh, it wins the most. Okay, I actually, uh, that's... I've actually been playing a bit of pure pally, uh, recently. And it has been destroying Hunter. Like I like literally like ninety percent against Hunter. Um over like twelve games or something. But uh yeah, like there was one night where I queued up against only Beast Hunter and then the next night it was like only Druid and like Warlock as well. Like there there are other decks, like but there's definitely a lot of Beast Hunter. Um uh, but like I, I'm sure okay. you, you were playing the deck well because like uh or or something like that. Because the uh, the matchup for Pure Paladin into Beast Hunter is very bad. Um, so, That's surprising. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's like exceptionally bad. Like it's uh, a sixty six percent win rate for the Hunter. So the fact that you got to beat a whole bunch of them is really fucking cool. I'm, I'm happy for you, man. But uh, that, it's not like that for uh, the majority of Hearthstone I'm players. Just trying to flex. It's a very unfavored matchup for um, the Paladin. Yeah, but they're the hey, well, Hunter is very strong. Um, it, it is it is the strongest deck uh, probably, but um, there are other strong decks for sure. Like Warlock, I mean, we see that number two here. Uh, Imp Warlock, however you want to play it, whether you want to play it with curses or just straight up Imp Warlock, like that deck is fucking strong. Uh, they don't even yeah. use like any new cards in the expan in in the mini set. Uh, that deck is just insane. Um, True. That's the only deck that's got a higher than a 50% win rate, really. For, you know what I mean? That's that's That deck is great, but it's... That deck is great, too. Yeah, but uh, hey, Druid is really strong, too, man. Um, I mean, it's the same thing as before, but now you could add the due processes in there and make your opponent uh, draw, like, 30 cards a turn while they're at, like, 5 mana, and then you draw, like, 30 cards a turn while you're at, like, 15 mana. And uh, it's pretty good, man. Yeah. I don't know. Druid is still so very annoying to play against question with the due process is that so is that just like a mill druid or is that just like a ramp druid with like the same payoff packages before but you just have like super consistent draw and your opponent just like even though you're giving them extra cards they just can't do anything because they, they just don't have the mana which one is it yes okay <laughs> it's, pretty much, <laughs> it's pretty much both of those things that you just described right there combined into one okay like it okay. can be it can, right. it can win on the mill package or the mill the mill win condition or you could just win because like you just keep playing your cards and your opponent just can't get enough out of their hand you know i think it's okay. a really challenging card then... as a fun card to like choose when to play and when not to because i've had people play it against me when i'm playing relics and it like helps me win the game um because i yeah. draw more and i am popping off before they pop off um but then i've also had it when i like had like a pretty bricked hand and then, like, my opponent played it, and I kept drawing stuff. And even though I, I found the ability to vault dimensions, I just couldn't get rid of the cards in my hand fast enough to not burn a whole bunch. So my opponent just started, like, burning through my deck, and I couldn't play my cards. It was, like, pretty horrible. Um, you know, but, like, that time the opponent guessed very well when it was a good time to play the card. And the other situation is, like, a good example of when my opponent misjudged when he should have played or she should have played the uh, due process because instead it accelerated their demise. Mm -hmm. Cool card. Okay. Yeah, so um, I think, but I think, yeah, all yeah. the card, all these decks lose against Beast Hunter. So it just shows that like once they touch the Hunter deck a little bit, like the meta, the meta we have should be pretty cool because they'll be like Warlock and Shaman and Mage and, and Demon Hunter and Paladin 
and maybe Beast Hunter still. <laughs> yeah, Warlock's yeah. not cool though. They could touch that too, but um, we're super close to a, an awesome, an awesome meta game. But uh, I feel right now. Yeah. But. Uh, all they have to do is just uh, nerf Warrior because it's way too good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they unbuffed it, or they unnerfed it, or whatever, making Shield Shatter go back to five, making the uh, the Title Revenant go back to eight, and it just made literally no difference like at all that that's class is crazy. brutal bro and like <laughs> uh we i mean yeah. i i i was gonna say i tried a little control warrior and it, it, it did pretty well against like the aggro decks because day one day two when i was able to play like everybody was slamming like aggro dh aggro druid you know aggressive hunter well whether you want to call wild seed beast hunter aggressive or mid-range like it did it did all right like there's a lot of aoe but like you've said it before dan um it just doesn't have a clear like end game win con yeah. besides possibly sire possibly kaz those are slow and like not consistent enough in comparison to like some of what the other control decks in this meta look like like priest quest priest is not a loss you know what i mean like it has to have something and right now it just doesn't really have anything that other classes don't do but just better um but it does have fantastic removal we just need to have something to like strive for after that removal instead of just literally nothing just pure removal doesn't win games yeah um exactly especially when you go against like uh like i, I was playing control warrior and like yes uh, of course it's gonna do pretty well against the aggro i still lost a shitload against uh aggro demon hunter even though i'm playing a control deck against an aggro deck but that's besides the point um uh but then like i i, I queue up against a, a thief priest and like, there's no way I can yeah. outvalue this. Like, <laughs> you I, just out, yeah. And then I have no win. Can like I have Kazakusan, but then they have uh, so much time to like either steal a Kazakusan from me or just like develop way more stuff on the board. Like that, I I can only clear the board so many times. I have infinite value. I have like, I can take a little bit. I could take a minion out of their hand that they stole from me. Uh, that's about it. Um, uh, so yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty uh, horrendous, but uh. Hey, maybe they're hey. It's like kind of building up for something in the future. Like they 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 have a good like uh, skeleton, I guess, uh, in the collection right now for warrior. And all on these, just a little a little juice. All right, because Akusan two point oh <laughs> next expansion. Hey, but uh, we could go yeah, into the top it. decks of the uh, uh, top decks in the one k. Draco sent me this in a really weird way, so it's a little hard to see. Uh, hopefully you can see this. <laughs> there's actually like a lot to fit in 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 the uh. Yeah, there's so many. Yeah, decks. that's a lot of decks, man. Yeah, whoa, whoa. Um, like tier yeah. two is like gigantic, so it was like, yeah. Is there a way I could like go to the side here? No. Hold up, I'll I'll fix. I'll 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 here. This is yeah. I'll I'll fix it. But uh, we have. <laughs> All right, so mage. at the top. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, almost at fifty nine percent. What do we Stop think about that? 000, yeah, that's cool though, huh? Like, I, I, I feel like you don't see a lot of spooky mage, but it's nice that it's performing so well at like a really high level. Cool deck. Is this I've always been a fan of slow. spooky mage since it was nerfed. Yeah, and I got nerfed pretty heavily. Like, they, those weren't like light touches; those were like penetration. So. <laughs> Like, uh, uh, what was it? The hero going down to just, like, one, one extra bonus damage when it kills something. And then the location going down to two durability. I mean, that's, that's, those were huge changes. I mean, that drastically reduces the amount of damage that that deck puts out and the freezes. So seeing it at the top here, I mean, it, I guess it must do well against Hunter. I mean, that's, because if everybody's playing Hunter and then Mage is doing well, does, I guess that's, that's something. Yeah, I haven't even seen. I, I've seen like zero mages, pretty much, like uh, very, very few mages. But the class does still seem strong. It's I, I don't know. Maybe people are just bored of it. I I would be bored of it if I was playing it uh, all day every day. Like it's it's uh, the same thing over and over. Just develop your skeletons, uh, develop your pings, and then just uh, play your solid alibis and don't die. You know, I don't know. It's 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 kind of eh, um, but. It's nice to see that Beast Hunter is not at the top. I guess I, it's it's a little surprising. So 
thought this was like really interesting. <laughs> I was pulled it up. I was like, what? There's so many decks that are doing good. This um and uh Base Hunter is the second best deck. Crazy as shit. But if you go to like any other rank, like it's like Beast Hunter, Beast Hunter, Beast Hunter, Beast Hunter. So the only time it changes from being like the absolute undeniable best deck in the game is at top 1000. Mm -hmm. This is top 1000 across all servers right here. Correct. If you go into like America's, uh, it, it is Spooky Mage that is the best. And I think there might be something going on here because like everyone says spooky mage is the best, but like I don't fucking believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I did see um Superior David playing Spooky Mage last night and he was having some good success with it. Um before I went to bed. I only watched a couple of games, but I mean I did see a person play it and he did win all the games that I saw. Must be good. Yo, it in China, good. the best deck in the game is a 30 card beast hunter deck. Or a 30 card face hunter deck. It's like. Ugh. Dude, Asia Pacific is always so aggressive, man. All of the decks <laughs> they play are always just like face and aggro. It's so funny. The deck looks like crazy, man. It has like a collateral damage on the top, <laughs> but it's like all of face course. hunter. It's like click clockers and slither spears, Raj Naj John. You know what I mean? I, I'm sorry. What do you call me? <laughs> yeah, face hunter is always. It's always reliable, for sure. Ever I'm since surprised. 2013, bro. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's always a deck that, like, it just punishes any unrefined deck. Like, if your deck is not refined or you're not playing a good deck, Face Hunter, if it draws just even okay, is just going to mow you down. And I think, you know, it's always good to have, like, an aggro deck that does that. I've never minded losing to Face Hunter because you know exactly, like, what you don't know exactly, but you know what their game plan is. You know how many cards they have in a hand. There's not too much draw on the deck. And you can, like, the damage that they do isn't random. Like, everything does what it says in regards to damage. So there's no surprise. It's not like, you know, uh, the Yogg Box or whatever, Rune of the Archmage, and all of a sudden you went from, like, a winning position with a couple cards on board to your board is gone, they drew a bunch of cards, and they have three secrets out. <laughs> so. Yeah, I can, never, so I can never get tired of getting top-decked by, like, like into an aim shot and, like, losing. Uh, I, I love playing as Face Hunter. Never. <laughs> yeah. It's not that Sometimes bad. Sometimes Face Hunter takes really cool forms, though. Like, I liked it when there was, like, Dragon Face Hunter with, like, the, uh, the fucking hammer that, like, ha had infinite Oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Was, that, was... that was a fun one to lose. Rotness to. Drake. Yeah, yeah, it had, Rot like, that dude, dude. Drake, and then the little poison one nah, that picked another Bran one. Bran was nuts. Seven mana King Crush was stupid. Uh, the rest of it was <laughs> fine. But the I mean, King that was Crush the has seven one. mana. Yeah, I mean, that was the best version of eventually the hunter died. there was one point at, in the game where you ran like a full dragon package with like double hammers and shit yeah it was cool and it had the three mana two three that discovered a dragon and then top yeah. end was like yeah okay that was a yeah, face that was, that was a, but it was cool <laughs> yeah that one was it, cool. it was it was interesting and it was cheap too it was very budget friendly yeah except i think it had a dragon bane in it because that card was cool like the one that like mm, shot yes. the the five mana arrow into a random thing. Yes, five damage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A catapult. silver hand Dude, that paladin at the bottom here. What the fuck? No there way. There is dude. pure silver hand. Yeah, dude, I don't even believe good. any of this. This is just ridiculous, man. No, 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 like, I'm, I'm serious. Like the the pure paladin that I beat, uh, like a million hunters with was silver hand pure paladin. Like that deck is actually kind of crazy. I don't know. It's it's really uh it's not a meme, bro. Okay. All right, you're hey, gonna have Pete, to send me that one on not Discord. A meme. <laughs> you're, yeah, yo, send me that deck list on Discord right now, Dan, so I can I play you. that later. You're gonna have to send me that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah that it. sounds juiced. It's fun. All right. Okay. Um. All right. So we have. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna go into the next thing here. We're gonna talk about some individual cards from the mini set because the mini set did just come out very recently. Uh, so some highlight cards that are standing out uh sightless magistrate Draco. have you guys played this card i have and i've played against i it wanted to today dude it's it's pretty sweet dude I, I really 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 like this card um it, it feels incredibly powerful it makes me think that like once hunter is nerfed like aggro demon hunter is going to be like the nuts because this card is disgusting especially like if you get to draw five with it which has happened to me like more than i would have thought like uh, i just 
play every single thing in my hand and then draw five. It also has this amazing, uh, I don't know if you guys ever thought about this or had this happen or saw this happen, but uh, it, it like destroys the jailer decks that like destroy because they destroy their hand, they, their, uh, mm -hmm. their deck. Then you like make them draw their fatigue cards. <laughs> mm. I have seen a clip. Yeah, yeah. I've done that to, I think it's, I've done it like three times this week where someone played jailer and was like, haha. I win, and I was like, "Now you draw four. <laughs> then, then it was like, "Oh shit, dude! They they died." <laughs> well, their hand has to be empty, right, or like less than five. Yeah. Okay. I would not be surprised if this card gets nerfed. Just saying. It does feel pretty crazy. If if Demon Hunter it gets really good, it'll be uh like oppressively good. It will be the aggro demon hunter deck, I feel, and the next set after nerfs. Yeah. And then it'll be because of this card. And which this card will probably be the target of a nerf, if any cards are, because and I think they'll hit the stat line on it or something. I honestly, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I honestly the stat line's like, crazy. I think that it should be like a three four. And, Maybe. and then I'm okay with it. Personally. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is kind of crazy though that like because even in the the suboptimal situations to play this card, it feels amazing you know like you're like okay on turn four i'll play a four mana five four draw two yeah sounds exactly. good arcane intellect on a five four <laughs> sounds sounds yeah it has no downside yeah yeah. It, yeah the downside is what it does for your opponent because there are these situations where like i'm playing against another really fast deck like if you play against hunter this card's like really fucking bad because like they never have five cards in their hand so you're always gonna have to draw them cards so you just sit on them the whole game so like the, the in in fact like this card's like counter is kind of itself in style, you know like that's kind of deep. Damn, it's true yeah. though. Like <laughs> you know like it, this deck can't this card ever can't ever be like too good because if everyone plays it, it's fucking bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like especially if you're playing uh like a mirror matchup then it's like you don't actually want to draw this you want to draw everything else pretty much or else you're going to be helping your opponent more than you're helping yourself it's a really interesting card in that concept but um yeah, yeah but they uh, somehow every demon hunter always has this as like their last like they play out their whole hand and this is this is they have one card in their hand and you're like there's no way there's no way that it's magistrate bro not again and it is <laughs> yeah. every time i can assure you if there's one card in their hand it's this all right <laughs> yeah actually like i started to see some of the better aggro decks started cutting magnifying glaive um wow. and then just running magistrate <laughs> well the draw makes up for it like you have too much draw right they kind of are bad in uh with each other in like these they have like because like a lot of times like if you're playing aggro and you have magnifying glaive and magistrate like in your hand you're just like all right well i'll play the magnet the the magistrate and draw cards and then i won't even worry about the magnifying glaive i'll just hold it until i need it and then you top deck another magistrate and you're like i'm not gonna play this fucking magnifying glaive because it's pointless like what this is like a dead card that's actually making my hand worse you know like so so we get around that by adding more cards to our deck so there's less chance that we draw both at the same time That's and what we I just tried. have more gas and how did that work out it wasn't horrible but it's just not nowhere near cons as consistent as just playing this <laughs> card in a 30 card yeah okay yeah. you definitely want to run man cricks in, in these aggro lists that run this card too oh yeah even though like oh, yeah. everyone always yeah. like questions that it's it's just because you draw so fast that getting like the three seven really quick in the early game is like uh is pretty is, is, is really pretty impactful to the outcome yeah yeah so. i was always a fan of man crick and aggro demon hunter absolutely oh, this one it, it's like even better for man crick too though because you're just like you just need to play your cards and draw your cards, you know, like, and, and the man crick has no situational circumstance. If you can play it, you just jam it and then it'll pay off later. Mm -hmm. Just jam it, just jam it in guys. That's the lesson. All right. Uh, next card we have here is due process. Um, this is the new druid card. Uh, you draw an extra card. Every player, they draw an extra card at the start of their turn. It's actually bugged right now. I, I don't know if it's still bugged. I think it is bugged still. Um, that if your opponent, if you if they play this card, 
and then their opponent plays the a hero card, then they draw an extra card on top of the extra card um, every turn. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. That's kind of a big deal. A little bit, yeah. But uh, <laughs> regardless, this card is super strong. We talked about it a little earlier. Uh, and not only is it a nature spell, but um, Druid, of course, just ramps up really quickly. They usually have double your mana. And if they have double, their, double your mana and they're drawing extra cards and you're both drawing extra cards, then uh, only the Druid is usually going to be able to take advantage of the uh, all the cards that they're drawing in their hand. Uh, as Like, they can play a lot of the cards out, as opposed to your opponent that typically cannot play a lot of cards. Like, if you're playing Beast Hunter, uh, yes, you're going to have some small stuff you can get out, but uh, you're only going to be pumping out, like, one thing a turn, and your Druid opponent is going to be pumping out, like, three, four, five, like, a lot of cards. So, uh, yes, this can end up milling your opponent, uh, but usually, I mean, you're just winning because you're just drawing into all your stuff. You're just getting down all your minions. You get your Topior down. You, you get to your Denathrius quicker. You get all that stuff going online, and, like, your opponent can only play, like, one card. Like, they only play Theotar, and then they miss, and then it's like, all right, well, I lost. Um, yeah, this card's crazy good. Um, I didn't think it was going to be good, but... It's kind of it's doing a lot, and then you could you could generate more of them with the uh, the one mana spell as well, the uh, evidence. So it, it's a little scary, not gonna lie. Yeah, I feel like in wild this has to be super good too. It, like, it's like kind of weirdly balanced too, because you let your opponent draw first. That's mm -hmm. true. That's true. That's like a, a usually a really bad thing, right? Like you play a card that does nothing, but it does help your opponent out on the following turn. That's like a really weird caveat to this card. But. Yeah, but I think with the amount of ramp that Druid has, that it just like while that is bad, it just makes up for it. They just play more stuff, more green cards. I did played. not believe in this card when I saw it. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I thought this was gonna be like super bad. Um, have you ever had someone, I, I don't, I've never had someone do this to me, but where they like play like three or four of them in a game. Oh yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. They could generate more. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know you can generate more. And also the craziest thing is, uh, like the moonlight card that like yep. draws a card in your deck. Tutors the other one. Yeah. I've had, I've had a druid play three of these, uh, by turn five. And, uh, I was playing like a control priest. So. Uh. <laughs> they're like this is pod racing yeah it was fun i actually almost won by fatigue it was very close at the end um but yeah it was uh it was not that fun just playing one card a turn not gonna lie and drawing like four but um yeah whatever it was definitely an interesting game that i've never been i've never been in a situation like that before so it was a <laughs> unique circumstance uh yeah i feel neat. i feel fortunate to have witnessed it Honestly, so can we add Sylvanas too? We should talk about her. We forgot to add her. I was thinking about that. Yeah, we could we could talk about Sylvanas here. Yeah, just I was just thinking about that on the fly. Like let's let's cover Sylvanas because we didn't talk about that. We didn't choose that ahead of time. Doing it live. There she is. Boom. What do you think about Sylvanas, Dan? I think she's hot. Yeah, yeah. she always has been. Are you talking about the? Court? But uh, I, I I think like she feels pretty good. Yeah, uh, I thought she was a pretty solid card to begin with. Uh, like, I, I don't think you need her in certain in certain classes, like priests. Like, you already have so much removal and stuff like that. But uh, decks like druid, decks like hunter, like this fits in perfectly. Like, even like you're probably gonna get the infuse off, and even if you don't, like it's just uh, single target removal, decent body. <clears throat> Seems good to me. Yeah. She does have a decent body. I agree. Uh, and it, Only it's a 5-5, five five, so like, if, if you just use the battle cry without infusing it, it usually feels pretty good, you know? Yeah, exactly. I thought she was going to be really bad. She was surprisingly not bad. So I was definitely wrong. She, she surprisingly, she works out in a lot of positions. I would say. Yeah. And I wouldn't have expected... Yeah her to be able to you know slot into so many great situations but i mean mm -hmm. it's like these decks that don't usually have single target removal like like hunter doesn't usually have access to that 
unless they play like uh, some kind of niche card, like a poison card or something. And then uh, Druid does have like the nine cost. They have the Devourer, but usually they're just killing stuff off of their tokens, like one by one kind of thing. Uh, but this is like, uh, it can be a single target removal or it could just really like the, the ability to actually mind control something for six mana. Uh, that's like a huge, that could cause like a huge, uh, tempo swing there to just win the game. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I didn't think she was going to be super great either, but after putting her in, you know, a, uh, a solid amount of positions and, uh, and circumstances in my <laughs> deck, I, I felt like she was, uh, she felt really good. Yeah. 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 Yeah um we have this uh reddit post right here didn't see any posts about this uh but uh vg underscore 50 on twitter found this coin in the game files a few days ago and whenever somebody finds like some weird ass uh whenever somebody finds something in the game files like that's usually like a legit kind of thing that's coming in the game at some point so uh yeah breaking news new coin possibly coming into the game here this is sick it's Cthulhu. yeah that's yeah that's pretty badass Cthulhu is coming back in the new in in the new uh, rotation. Is it confirmed? Yeah. Well, with a coin like this, eh, Dark Moon. Uh, it made me think of Uldar. I okay. Yeah, they already uh, explained where this came from. Do you guys want me to just ruin the? the yeah, 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 yeah. It, okay. It's not Uldar, right? No, no. They they made a collectible coin for uh, having completed the old sets. So if you had all oh, of okay. the. Uh, the whispers of the old god cards this is going to be mm -hmm. a coin that you get to that you can use boo boo nah, i don't know that's cool that's a cool coin they are doing it for all of the sets as well i thought they already so had like that like goro knights of the frozen throne like the grand tournament all of them are going to have a collectible coin fantastic yeah now that's i'm gonna buy that's all those stuff. other sets again let's go I think that this, this someone brings... will do that, you know, and that is a victory for them. Zeddy will do it, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's all the news we have, guys. That's all the topics here. I have if a you... question. Yes. Well, yeah, before you ask that question, sorry. Uh, chat, we are going to open it up to you guys right after Rob. Uh, it's for your questions. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to... Did you guys see the food characters? Ask them in chat, and we will uh, answer them. All the food skins that came up this week? Uh, yes. I did sick. not. <laughs> yeah, well, they're Only sick, one of them dude. is sick, I guess. Which one do you think is sick? I heard I heard that only one of them has, like, effects and, like, stuff like that. Like, only the, the chili pepper guy. Reno? Yeah. And that is, like, the that that is a sick freaking... I love it. <laughs> what is he? He, like, shoots, like, chili I, peppers I have no or something? Idea. He shoots he a full... What like, you guys are talking about. He he shoots an entire chili pepper like his hero power at the at the opponent like it's it's insane, and then like there's another one uh, that uh, like the opening animation is like I, maybe it's the same guy I, no maybe I don't know one of them like he, he like comes together as like a whole breakfast meal like at the beginning of the the game I don't like it, it throws like a what are you talking about throws like you think that it's fucking fake but it's literally like is in the game bro. You like slam down you an egg, about? put some. So they made it. The they animated like, the oh. hero power for this skin to be like throwing a chili pepper, and it looks like a joke, but it's real and it's in the game. Like so, the the Reno cook the cookout Reno skin, the hero power animation. Talking about for like battlegrounds? No, this is in standard, bro. It's in like it's right in now. Game. It's the new twenty five dollar bundle. Let yeah. me find it. Oh. Okay, yeah, I have, dude, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> he's throwing chili peppers and he's making breakfast. I'm like, damn, Hearthstone's getting lit. Dude, honestly, like, the, these skins are top tier. I, I don't know if, I think it's a different skin, the one, the other one, the breakfast one. But, like, that opening animation, oh, my God. I, I want it so bad. It's just 25 bucks, though, because you have to, you have to buy the bundle that includes the I linked the it in chat. Skins. There and you go. Right, I'm looking right now. about guys. Yeah, I'll play it. A Reno Mage. Hold up, let me show. Dude, this. it literally puts like a stake on the board when he gets summoned. It's oh fucking Oh my god, insane. yeah. It's so hot. 
Is it just right, one right. skin for twenty five dollars, well, or is it like uh, you gotta buy them. two skins and look, this is like the only one? Look, that there's does the chili something. pepper. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. That's um, crazy. You have to buy the two skins. I I don't think the other skin really does anything crazy, and then you also get like some packs I'm with it as well. Imagine spending $25 on an animation and a skin, or you could spend $25 and explore the entire world of I Warcraft. think I'd rather take the skin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that skin's really cool. Oh, I, I will give them it that. Is. Like, I'm not going to criticize it. I think it's really fun. <laughs> Very tempted. The price is a lot, but whatever. You know, like... I don't know. I wish they I made, if they would have made a 10, I feel like they would have sold that. it a shit ton. Yeah, I twenty-five dollars. That is a, that's a steep cost, bro. That's exp That's some of the most expensive League of Legends skins. Yeah, I mean they're doing the thing still that they said that they. I mean they didn't say they weren't gonna do this, but uh, when they came out with runestones, they were saying like, yeah, like to justify the runestones, like we're gonna put these smaller, we're gonna make it so like now you can only buy like you only have to buy one skin or something for like uh, we can we can make these smaller bundles and whatever and. Uh, we haven't really seen that so far. Yeah. They just still... Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. They're they still making not. you buy other shit with it. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, my question. Um. The next expansion, do we have any ideas? So we had the rumors that the Death Knight was coming out, right? Uh, just rumors, speculation. Do we have... Do you guys have any, uh, like, you know what I mean? Any... uh. You know, any thoughts on what you think? Given that we've seen now the mini set, anything, anything spark with you guys? Um, I think it'll be like Escape from Ice Crown Citadel or something like that. Like, honestly. Okay. I can see that. It's, it's going to definitely have something to do with like, like Wrath of the Lich King. Like for sure. Dude, Whether it's a raid it in there. That. Watch that. Escape from Ice Crown. <laughs> they might bring back like a Nax Ramus. Because that's, they have Nax Ramus. You've got the Grand Tournament there. Uh, you have Uldar, which is huge. Um, What other raids are in there? You have a whole of like Dragon Blight. You have Ruby Sanctum stuff. You have Winter Grasp, which is like the largest PB PvP zone like almost ever in WoW, which could be sick. So there's there's definitely a lot they could do with like, you know, obviously gonna incorporate the Death Knight stuff potentially maybe rumor speculation. Rumor Have they come it. out with Strangle Vietnam? <laughs> I don't think it's gonna be Dragonflight stuff. I don't I don't think so. I have no idea. <clears throat> uh, Death I'm excited Knight, though. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm very excited because uh, last time they added a new class, it broke the whole entire game. So I can't wait. Oh uh, my god! For this one. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be sick. I like the funny expansions the most, to be honest. You know, like the ones that aren't like Castle Nathria. I like the ones that are like Skullman's Academy and everything. <laughs> you know, and like Boomsday. Skullman's was busted. Those it are was my so, favorite. It was a lot of flavor though. There was a lot of flavor in Skullman's. I'll I like give it the that. Flavor, yeah. It was just so yeah. good, yeah. Like the whole Harry, I don't know, I got a lot of Harry Potter vibes and stuff. It, it was very cool. And they did the dual classes, you know, like, they had all the best stuff in that expansion. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Alright, I guess we could call it here, guys. Unless Rob wants to talk about WoW PvP a little bit. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no. I will ask, how's Draco? How's your WoW been? Because, uh, you know, you, you've you been playing still, right? Before we go? Yeah. Yeah, I've been playing a lot. I'm still leveling up my priest right now. Um, I'm around, like, 43, I believe, at the moment. Oh, my God. Look at you go. Look at you <laughs> yeah. go. Um, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I just got power infusion. So I just, like, really enjoy just, like, constantly hitting, like, the casters and my groups. And watching them light up on fire and do a whole bunch of DPS. Feels good. Mm -hmm. um, so you're I, holy. I did, like, the glyph of Holy Nova. And my character is like fully specced out for Holy Nova. So I just like run into mobs and do more DPS than the DPS players because I, my Holy Nova does like a shit ton of damage. And I have all like the discipline buffs and it heals them. Spells cost less mana. 
so I can just spam it over and over and over. Yeah, that's good. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. But yeah, it feels then, good now uh, that I'm at you'll... the point in WoW where I can like go into a dungeon with like one other person and like with like Inner Fire and uh, Holy Nova, I can like solo the whole dungeon as a disc priest because no one makes it through the bubble to hit me while I'm Holy Nova and everything. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, I I've been seeing a lot of the Hearthstone guys on Anger Forge now. What is there, like 21 of you in that guild now? There's a lot of us. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. I also just recently realized that I got to the point where uh, when people like want to PVP me in like the open world, that's like a mistake for them sometimes. Like, like and that feels <laughs> amazing. You know, like we're like three people like try and jump me, even though I'm higher level. And then I just like bubble myself and I'm like, now I take no damage and you all run away in crazy different directions. And like, it feels fucking great when everyone tries to jump you as a priest and you're just like, I take no damage, but you guys can't even. Yeah. They me. undervalue your power. Yes. They they don't realize that the PVE skills for being a disciplined priest are some of the most annoying things to kill if you're just trying to gank someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your fear is is pretty nuts because it's it's like eight seconds and it works on like five people and then you can dot them at the same time and then yeah it's it's juice. Yeah, priest it's, is it's super really easy fun, to like not class. die because people attack you. You power word shield yourself and then you fear AOE so that everyone runs in different directions. And then you dot them all as they're running away, right? Like you get that guy, you put you vampiric touch, shadow word pain, shadow word pain. Ev everyone gets a shadow word pain. And then you heal yourself back up. And then your, your power word shield cooldown is off. So you give yourself another shield. And when they come back, you fear them again. Put the dots back on them, say bye bye to them. And then eventually they all die. You know, it, it happens slowly, but they all die eventually, typically. That's, That's like good. real life. And how do you feel about the stand? Oh, I love it, man. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> dude, I'm leveling up like crazy, bro. It's sick. yeah, yeah. My guild is just popping off. We've done. Oh man, we just we just finished uh, the uh, so many raids. Na I can't even. Na uh. Yeah, na name name two raids. Oh my god, it's that it's, I did not name. I've probably done too many to even remember, honestly. Like, uh, <laughs> like I just I just got this rare mount drop. It was so sick. Like, I'm, uh, it's like a horse with like a fucking fire fucking oh crazy he just um, named all the undead horses <laughs> <laughs> yeah he just named like every undead horse that exists um uh. yeah but uh before you guys scare away all my viewers with your wow talk um let me uh <laughs> nah um the three of us are going to be at twitchcon this upcoming uh whenever it is yeah this next this upcoming weekend we are going to all be no. there oh yes yes so probably no yes. meta breakers because it seems like it would be really annoying to figure out how to do that. Probably we like, not. Like, yeah. Yeah, we'd have to like live from the couch. Online. IRL in the BMB. IRL from the couch. Get it done. Casting couch. It'll be on Instagram live. <laughs> TikTok. Yeah, we'll be at the meta breaker <laughs> booth, guys. Yeah, that'll be sweet. next year for sure. Yeah um yeah guys but uh that's gonna be it if you guys want to check out our fellow podcasters podcast hosts here there's their channels right there we got warshack and draco cat hope you check out their twitch channels and their youtube channels as well after you check down mine um and uh yeah hope you guys enjoyed the episode and thanks for being here guys yeah let's go thanks dude thank you thank you Always a pleasure. have a good uh rest of your yeah have a good rest of your stream dan have a good weekend Twitch chat and have a good rest of your weekend as well, Draco. I'll see Thanks, you guys man. in Peace. four days. Hell yeah. See you in <laughs> baby. Peace out. Yeah, see you for dinner. Hey. Bye bye.